The Permian period was a time of peculiar animals, from sailed back synapsids to buzzsaw jawed fish. One bizarre and often overlooked species from this time period is Cuperoceris, a strange genus of nautiloid cephalopod with the spiny shell. In this video, we'll be taking a look at this animal and learn more about its bizarre appearance. Enjoy! The first fossils of Cuperoceris were discovered in the Glass Mountains of West Texas, and the genus was named in 1945 by paleontologist Arthur K. Miller. The name Cuperoceris means Cooper's horn, and more fossils of this animal were uncovered throughout Lower Permian formations in North America and Europe. These fossils show that the genus persisted from 303 to 268 million years ago. Cuperoceris was a rather small animal at just 10 centimeters long and 7.6 centimeters high. In comparison, the modern day chambered nautilus is around 20 centimeters long, making it nearly double the size of Cuperoceris. The coiled shell shape allowed Cuperoceris to live in deeper parts of the Permian Ocean. Cuperoceris was a carnivore and would have eaten small animals like some species of trilobites, sea snails, and starfish. Despite its coiled shell, Cuperoceris was not an ammonite. Instead, it was a genus of tinocerated nautiloid, although its exact phylogeny is still unknown. Nautiloids and ammonites often get confused with one another since they both have similar shells. The key difference is that nautiloids possess a hood-like structure known as the operculum. The operculum is part of the shell that can open and close to give the animal better protection from predators. Like the modern-day chamber nautilus, Cuperoceris would have also had an operculum. The most distinguishing and recognizable feature of Cuperoceris is its bizarre shell with rows of spines going along its curves. Currently, the exact reason for why Cuperoceris had such a spiny shell is unknown. One possible explanation could be that these spines were used as display structures to attract mates. Perhaps individuals with the biggest spines got the most mates. The spines may have also been a way to help these animals differentiate each other. However, these purposes might not be likely or even possible. The modern day chambered nautilus does not have a strong sense of vision. They instead rely on their sense of smell to find suitable mates. It's likely that Cuperoceris would have also have had poor vision, and would have relied on smell instead. Another possibility is that these spines were used as an extra layer of defense. After all, Cuperoceris would have shared these seas with hostile predators. One of the best known predators of the time was Helicoprion. Helicoprion was a monstrous fish with a bizarre buzzsaw shaped lower jaw that was adapted for slicing through the flesh of softbody cephalopods. Their saw-like lower jaw could have also helped smash through the shells of ammonites and nautilids but an animal with a spiky shell might have been less appealing. Prehistoric sharks, like Satanacanthiforms, also patrolled these seas. These animals had sharp, prong-like teeth designed for holding and grasping prey, rather than slicing or crushing bites. Their diet may have consisted of smaller organisms they could eat whole, such as small fish, cephalopods, and arthropods. Having a spiny shell may have helped to deter these kinds of predators and keep Cuperoceris safe. While the exact reasons remain unknown, more discoveries will help shed light on life in the Permian Seas. For now, one thing can be said for sure. Cuperoceris was a beautiful and amazing animal from this time of peculiar creatures. Before I conclude this video, a special thank you goes out to all my Patreon supporters who helped make funding for this video possible. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to the channel and follow Nature's Compendium on social media and Discord. You can also support my channel on Patreon and get behind the scenes access to exclusive content, rewards, and even early previews of upcoming videos. As always, thank you for watching.